So good to see everyone this morning. Thank y'all for coming out for worship once again. Thank God for another opportunity to come out for corporate worship once again. Pray that everyone had a great week this week, a blessed week this week. Um, we're going to get ready to do our scripture for this morning. If you would, turn with me to Mark chapter 6. Mark chapter 6. And we will begin reading at verse uh, 45. Mark chapter 6, verse 45. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version. Although I wasn't here yesterday, I heard it was a great time yesterday. Thank you all that came out yesterday. And I want to thank those that uh, put, this, put the event together. I wasn't able to make it, but again, thank you guys for putting the event together. I pray that it was a blessing for everyone. Mark chapter 6, verse 45. It reads, immediately he made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side, to Bethsaida. While he sent the multitude away, and when he had sent them away, he departed to the mountains to pray. Now when the evening came, the boat was in the middle of the sea, and he was alone on the land. Then he saw them straining at rowing, for the wind was against them. Now about the fourth watch of the night, he came to them, walking on the sea, and would have passed them by. And when they saw him walking on the sea, they supposed he was a ghost and cried out. For they all saw him and were troubled. But immediately he talked with them and said to them, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Then he went up into the boat to them, and the wind ceased. And they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. For they had not understood about the loaves, because their hearts were hard. Anybody glad that God sits high and looks low? Yeah. Yeah. This, uh, you've been paying attention to things going on in the world. You know, if you're like me, sometimes we like these disciples. We're straining at rolling, trying to make a difference, trying to um, draw others to Christ. We find ourselves straining at rolling. Just like these disciples. So I just want to encourage everyone that just like Jesus was sitting up in the mountain, even though they were straining and rolling, he saw them. Amen. And he went to them. And so the encouragement for you all today is, even though this was evening, they're out on the water, the seas are, are raging, sometimes we find ourselves in those moments. But don't forget, still keep your eye on the Christ on God. He's, he's sitting high and he's looking low. Amen. So I just want to encourage everybody on that. Um, one of the things about these disciples is that they have forgotten all that they had already witnessed. They have been with Jesus. They just saw him feed the, uh, the 5,000. And so that's why in that last verse it says for them, they had understood, they had not understood about the loaves because their hearts were hard. Just that quick. They had forgotten so keep your mind stayed on Jesus throughout all these trials, throughout all these things that we're witnessing. Keep your mind stayed on him. Let us pray. Father, we thank you again, God, for another opportunity to come out and worship together. We thank you, God, how you kept us throughout this week, how you continue to bless us, Lord. Lord, we make mistakes. None of us are perfect. So, Lord, we thank you for your grace, your mercy, your kindness, your love, God. Thank you, God, for keeping your arms around us, your arms of protection around us, Lord. So many, God, don't have the opportunity or didn't have the opportunity, God, to get up this morning to even have the opportunity to worship. As I got here this morning, I heard about two young men that lost their lives again last night in Chester, Father, to violence. So, God, we just thank you for the opportunity again, God, to come together to worship. We thank you, God, for each and every opportunity you give us daily, God, to make a difference 
in another person's life. And so, God, we just give you all, all the honor and glory today. We ask God that you have your way in this service, Lord. We ask God that you have us, God, to open up our hearts and minds to hear your word, God. But not only be hearers, Lord, but be doers, Lord, when we leave this place. We walk into many sanctuaries all over this land where there's a sign that says, enter the worship, depart the service. Help us focus on that matter, Lord. Taking what we've learned, God, what we've heard from your word, God, and taking it out and being a service, Lord, for you, God. So, God, we just thank you, God. We thank you for our pastor. Thank you for the word that will come forth today. Thank you. We thank you again, God, for all that are here. We pray for those, God, that wanted to be here today but could not. Pray for those, God, that are sick and shut in. And, Lord, we just ask you, God, to, again, forgive us for all of our sins, whether by thought, word, or deed. Continue to guide us, Lord. Guide our hearts. Guide our minds. Order our steps, Lord, as we go forward. This be our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Well, what I said to you last week from Hebrews 10, 25, that we ought to be encouraging others in good works. Amen. You made sacrifices. Some of you do it real deep just to bless other people. Amen. And I pray that God blesses your businesses. And I would like if we could just kind of uh, get that patron's list again. And uh, I like to read it, but I want to personally thank everyone. And all the men who came out on Thursday, Friday, and finally Saturday, they completed the task and get that tear up. Amen. And you all just to be standing up in the Amen. You all just stand up. Stand up. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now that tent's a beast, isn't it? <laughs> but you were steadfast. Unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, your labor paid off. Amen. God bless you. Thank you all for being there. To uh, I think I see Orlando back there. Man, thank you for just keeping your word. You say that I'll be here tomorrow. Amen. And you know what? I came out looking for you, man, and you're here. And I'm just excited for all of you. God bless you. So, and this is all came out here. Uh, bless the Lord. Uh, Matthew 28, verses 11 through 15 is what I want to talk about today. Um, I, I need you to hear me more than with uh, uh, your, your spiritual ears because there's some things that I'm just going to touch on today that has uh, some other implications more than just spiritual. Matthew 28, 11 through 15 the New King James Version. The Bible reads, and I, I know you're turning there, so maybe I need to wait a moment. Matthew 28, 11 through 15. Now while they were going, behold, some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priests all the things that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders, and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And they come to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed, and this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. I want to just talk this morning on the subject, the benefits of truth and the consequences of lies. The benefits of truth and the consequences of lies. Last week's message was entitled, Paying Attention to Signs. In this message, I stress the importance of understanding the message or messages from signs. Now, we need to understand that signs are often given by both God and men. However, signs from God deserve our utmost attention. Yet, we must understand that we cannot ignore signs that are given by man. Two weeks ago, I shared with you the ruling by the Supreme Court as they struck down affirmative action being one of the considerations for students' admission into universities or higher institutions of learning. That was a sign. A few days ago, the Florida Board of Education passed curriculum that requires teachers to teach that slaves benefited from slavery. In essence, from my perspective, these teachers are being forced to teach lies instead of telling the truth. The reality we must accept is that America has a dark past on many fronts. And to attempt to cover the path with lies would only make things worse instead of better. 
Can I tell you sometimes the truth hurts? It hurts people to be willing to admit something happened when they really don't want to admit it. And sometimes to have to come to the place where we tell the truth, it inflicts pain on people because they'd rather mask something over with lies. I met people who apologize for the wrongs committed by their ancestors. However, these people need to understand that the guilt of their ancestors do not make them guilty. Amen. In other words, we can't hold people uh, blamed today for what happened in the past when people had nothing to do with the past. Amen. It's wrong for us to blame people for the injustices committed when they had nothing to do with it. What happened. It, it is also wrong for people to feel this sense of guilt because of their ancestors when they had nothing to do with what their ancestors did because they were not even born. <laughs> now, now, what I just said about America's history and, 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 and how uh, people hold issues with some folk because of what their ancestors did. And we need to be real about it. We, we sometimes look at people from a different, different ethnic group funny because of the history when they had nothing to do with it. But, but can I also tell you what applies to what I just said about America? It also applies to the church. You see, it may come as no surprise to some of you that there are people in the church who hold grudges because of issues their parents had, issues their grandparents had, issues that family members had with each other, and we still allow that to become reasons for us not to come together as we should. There is a great divide, even when it comes down to rural churches. Amen. A great divide because there are things that just hover over us. Things that we can't let go of. Things that we still blame family members for that had nothing to do with the past. But yet we still hold on to it. Thank you for the amen. <laughs> and I'm not expecting many because what I'm saying is a reality that some of us need to deal with. There are things that we need to get over in the body of Christ. There are things we need to get over in the church and even in this community. There are clouds hovering over us, families, because of things that happened in the past. I heard a political candidate saying, on yesterday, and it was a replay, slaves benefited from slavery by learning trades from being enslaved. And can I say this morning that slavery was wrong in so many ways. Amen. It was wrong for people to cross a vast ocean and take people away from their homeland. It was wrong for people to be taken away from their homeland and then stripped of their identity. It was wrong for people to be taken away from their homelands and families literally ripped apart. They were treated indignant. Attempts were made to, to, to break their spirits. They were considered as livestock, treated less than human. Both men and women were violated. They were tortured. Some of them were massacred. And they were, de and they were denied to be uh, equal with other humans as far as being seen to be have been created in the image of the divine. Even when there was overwhelming evidence that they too, like their captors, were created in the image of the divine. You see, regardless of our ethnicity, we all 
are created in his image Amen. and after his likeness. Thank you, God. You see, slaves were not equally valued as other humans were. Consider this, and I quote, Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution of the United States declared that any person who was not free would be counted as three-fifths of a free individual for the purpose of determining congressional representation, end quote. You see, slaves, by the estimation of some, had the same value or they were considered to be less valuable than animals. However, in the sight of God, we need to understand that we all are created in his image and after his likeness. My parents were sharecroppers. And I say mine, I have siblings who are here today. Our parents were sharecroppers. And I remember stories that mom and daddy told us as they expressed their experiences as sharecroppers. You know, and today I'm proud to be the son of sharecroppers. One generation away from experiencing what they experience, but I thank God for what they poured into my life, into our lives, Amen. letting us understand that God had brought them from right. a mighty long way. Yes. Yes. I look back and I remember vivid stories, but one particular story that they told is when they were staying on a certain person's property. Mom and dad were picking blackberries. And the owner of the property told them they couldn't pick the blackberries because the fowls of the other birds had to have something to eat. <laughs> in other words, this property owner saw more value in the birds than he saw in our parents. But I'm glad today that man can determine my value. You see, even though in their, in the property owner's eyesight, the birds were of more value than our parents were, but I thank God that God don't see it, see it that way. You see, from heaven's perspective, we are worth more than the fowls of the air. Listen to what Jesus said in Matthew 10, 29 to 31. He said, are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin? And not one of them falls to the ground apart from your father's will. But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore, you are worth more than many sparrows. In other words, there's still value in us, regardless of what other people think about us. And our value is not determined by somebody else. My value is determined by the God who made me in his image and created me likeness. Amen. Regardless of our ethnicity, we should say, as David said in Psalm 139, verses 14 through 15 through 16, listen to what David said. David said, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are the works, and that my soul knoweth very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret and skillfully walked in the lower part of the earth, your eyes saw my substance, being yet unformed. And in your book they are all are written. The days are fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. David said, I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. Anybody feel like David? Amen. When you look in the mirror, Regardless of what that image reflects on the other side, say, you ought to tell yourself, I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. You know, in other words, there's nothing wrong but with giving God praise for the way God made you. Now, I know that there's some folks that are always trying to doctor themselves up 
to make themselves look like somebody else. But I pray God today that I'm fearfully and I'm wonderfully made. I don't have to try to be like somebody else. All I've got to do is to be who God created me to be. And when I look in the mirror, I like the me that I see because God made me that way. And somebody ought to give God praise because you too are fearfully and you're wonderfully made. Amen. That's what David was saying. You see, the God who made us gave skills and unique abilities to those that were brought into this country as slaves. I want, I, want, I want you to hear that. You see, the people in Africa had unmatched skills and abilities before they were brought to this country. You see, if we only knew the heritage of our people from the motherland, we would share the inferior thoughts we have of ourselves that result from the disconnect of our lineage. Mm. Everybody understand that, right? Amen. 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 You see, one of the reasons that our people are set adrift is because we've been disconnected from our lineage. Yeah. If you don't know from which you came, how can you know where you go? Yeah. And so because we can't connect the threads, we don't understand that in some of our lineage, there is royalty. Amen. We don't understand that. We don't understand that we have come from some of the most brilliant people God created. Amen. There are unmatched skills and ability, even with people today in the motherland, for someone to say that we had to come over here to learn a skill. I take offense to that. Amen. I take offense to that because the God who made us he gave us skills and ability. There are brilliant minds, even in this place. There are great accomplishments that have been made by people of our ethnic group that we never get credit for because we didn't have the resources to be credited for what God had given unto us. There are brilliant people in this place. Now, I want you to understand that I'm not here today preaching a racist message. But what I am doing is trying to help people to understand the intrinsic value that you have within you. And if we don't realize that sometimes we take on this inferior complex because we feel that we're not good as everybody else. But yes, you are the same God that made somebody else. He's the same God who made you. didn't benefit from slavery. The nation benefited from our slavery. Can I say that again? We didn't benefit from slavery. This nation benefited from slavery. You see, the truth of the matter is this nation, the success, the great accomplishments that we see around us, these things happen because of the blood, sweat, and tears, and the sacrifices of slaves. Amen. Amen. So let's just tell the truth. Amen. So when you look around, you go to these cities where there are skyscrapers, you go into these metropolitan areas and see all these great things, then you need to understand that your ancestors paved the way for these buildings to be erected today. And then somebody says, I'm not being political, I'm just expressing my opinion, and I'm expressing an uh, opinion that will give hope to people today who may buy into a lie and not the truth. Amen. Our ancestors, they paid the price. And we here today, we ought to see ourselves and the value, the skills, the abilities that God has given us. You see, lies have consequences. That's right. Amen. Make, make no mistake about it. People think that lies don't matter, but lies do matter. If you don't believe that lies matter, go back to the book of Genesis. And in Genesis, you'll discover that Eve was deceived by a lie. 
And because of this deception, Eve ate of the forbidden fruit. Mm -hmm. You see, Eve's Eve deception opened the door for gullible Adam. Mm -hmm. Now let me just tell you, right? Adam wasn't gullible, Adam just sinned. Adam made the choice. Yeah. Okay, well let, 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 let's read and see what it says. Genesis 3, verses 2 through 6. And the woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Mm -hmm. Then the serpent said to the woman, you will not surely die. Mm -hmm. God said they were going to die. Mm -hmm. The devil came up with a lie, no, you're not going to die. But God knows that in the day that you eat, your eyes will open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, that was pleasant to the eye, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of the fruit and ate, and she gave to Adam. <laughs> Adam. Man, I tell you, why did Adam do that? Adam just messed us up. Amen. The Bible says that Adam, he did eat. That's right. That's right. But it was the lie that set off a chain of events Amen. that led to the place where Adam, he was tempted and he gave in to the temptation and he ate and he messed all of us up. Amen. So lies have consequences. After Jesus' resurrection, the keepers of the tomb lied about his resurrection. Listen to what Matthew writes. The Bible said, while they were going, behold, some of the guards came into the city and reported to the chief priests all things that had happened. And when they assembled with the elders and consulted with them, they gave them large sums of, of money to the soldiers, saying, tell them his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying is commonly re reported among the Jews until this day. Now think of all the people who were lost because of the lies of the soldiers. The soldiers lied and people, they were lost. People slipped into eternity without a savior. And people are still affected by lies. Yeah. The soldiers witnessed the resurrection of Jesus. It wasn't anything that they were told. They were, they were placed as guards at the tomb to secure the tomb, to make sure nothing happened. And they were there when the angel ascended from glory. Look at what Matthew writes in Matthew 28, verses 1 through 6. The Bible said, Now after the Sabbath, at the first day of the week, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to the tomb. And behold, when they, when they were there, a great earthquake. And behold, they were at, was a, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. And the God shook for fear of him and became like dead men. But the angel answered and said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He's not here, for he's risen just as he said. Come see the place where the Lord lay. In other words, those soldiers, they were there. They saw the angel working. They saw what was happening, and they fell to the ground like dead men. That should have been enough to change them. No, they got up and they took the lie. They went running back. No, they didn't lie initially. They went running back to the leader and they told them what happened. The leader said, all right, I'll tell you what to do. You go tell them that the disciples came and stole his body by night. We're going to give you some money and we're going to secure you. We're going to make sure you're all right. And these soldiers left there with the money in their pocket and they went lying and saying that Jesus didn't rise. Right. And there were folk that bought into that lie. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if the truth had only been told? Yeah. There would have been people who would have known the power of God. Yeah. Because Jesus said in three days, I'm 
going to rise again. Can't no grave hold his body down. In three days, Jesus got up by the power of God. But yet those soldiers who fell to the ground like dead men, they knew the truth, but they didn't stand up for the truth. They went and perpetuated the lie. The Bible says up to the time of this writing, people were still saying that stuff. All of the lost souls because people didn't tell the truth. Can I tell you, don't ever keep silent when you know the truth. Don't ever keep silent. You ought to speak truth in love. Doesn't matter if it hurts, you still speak truth in love. These soldiers knew the truth, but they perpetuated a lie. One of the greatest stains on our democracy happened on January 6, 2021. At the root of this insurrection was a lie about the election. People were injured on that day. People were killed on that day. People lives were forever changed because of that day. And you know what January 6, 2021 was about? A lie. It was about a lie that is still being perpetuated today. And there are folk who know the truth and they still won't speak the truth. Our nation is in trouble. I never thought that I would live to see a day where people would embrace a lie instead of embracing the truth. And there are so many people, listen, something is happening in America and it's not good. And I don't understand how a spirit of stupor can blind people to the fact that they can't wake up the truth and people won't stand up and tell the truth. Now we are at a place, people saying that slaves benefited from slavery. You see, I wanted to bring this message today because the Lord inspired me, first of all. And I said, Lord, if, if, if there's something else you want me to say, God, change it. Change it. And there are people who say, well, the church shouldn't address issues like this. The church has to address issues. Amen. You see, today, I, I, I want to give some of you young people. You see, I've, I've, I've lived, you know, my parents, I told you, they were sharecroppers. I've been through a lot of things that, that I've seen. And, and, and I'm afraid that if you don't get the truth, that your sense of identity can be glossed over by lies that are told. Can I tell every one of you today that, that you have value because God created you with your uniqueness. You created in his image and after his likeness. You, you don't have to try to go around being like somebody else. All you have to do is to be yourself. Amen. It's all right to become inspired, motivated, energized by what you see in other people. But understand that God made you with your uniqueness. And you have, you embody skills and abilities that are just waiting to be unleashed on the world. And you step out into that place. God, he will bless you. Amen. Jesus said these words, and I'm done. He said to the Jews, if you continue my words, in my word, he said, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you. I want y'all to be free today. Amen. I want you to know the truth about yourselves. I want you to know that you have God-given potential, God-given abilities. Don't, don't ever doubt what God can do for you. The story will one day be told about 
the success stories from a little church back in the wood, nestled away, where you have to literally stumble up on it to find it. The story of one of the great successes that has come forth from this ministry. And I wish someone would, 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 would just chronicle some stories that have already happened. The number of people who have successfully climbed corporate ladders, educational, academic, mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, writers, mm -hmm. doctors, The story will one day be told of the greatness that has come from this ministry. Mm -hmm. Never despise what God can do from an obscure place. An obscure place, great things can come out of the street. Amen. If you have dreams and visions today, maybe you're starting small. But every big thing came from something small. Amen. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. God bless you, my brother and my sisters. I want to tell you, first of all, the truth about yourself. If you're here and you're not saved, um, the truth is, all your sins can be washed away. And the Lord says that He forgive all our iniquities and remember our sins. If you're not saved, I want to give you the invitation. Before I extend an invitation to prayer, I want to give you an invitation to come. If there's one here. If not, maybe you desire prayer. And, and, and maybe some of you uh, are dealing with hostility today because of the past. And I tell you that some people who walk around feeling guilty because of what their ancestors did. And yet there's some of us who are hating people of a different ethnic group because of what their ancestors did. God wants you to be free today. He wants you to be free. Maybe you're here, maybe you desire prayer. If you're here, you desire prayer today. I want to pray with you. God bless you. Bless you.
I know some of the plights and the struggles of many people in our communities. I know what it's like to look upon the faces of those who dream of being shattered and they're dealing with feelings of low self-esteem and vanity. I know, Lord, how that people need to be lifted. They need to receive hope. And they need to know that there's worth, that there's value in them. And Father, I do think that at times the church has been silent. this message, I thank you for the spiritual implications of it. I thank you today, Lord, for the social implications of it. Yes, God. And Lord, you said your word won't return void. Yes, God. It's going to do what you sent your word to do. Yes, God. I thank you for every soul, every person, old and young, who has heard your word today. Some of us have had greater challenges with the struggle for equality and justice. Some of us, God, we lived experiences because of the times. And I thank you, Lord, for bringing us through. I thank you, Lord, for the strength that I see embodied within your people. Father, I pray over their health because there are things that, be, that are before them that require soundness of mind and soundness of body to walk into. I pray for their health today. That every disease, uh, thank you, Lord, every disease.
So come on up here. Come on. I, um, while y'all coming, I, I, I do want to take an opportunity to, to, come on, come on. Don't y'all need, don't be scared. Just want to, I, we got that open. Um, yeah, br Brother Rod, get the mic. I walked to Brother William and I, and I asked him, can I mention something about him? And, uh, and in his own humble way, he said, man, <laughs> I, he didn't know. But I feel in my spirit that, that sometimes we see success stories afar off. And we can't put our hands on people who have been successful. Sometimes people need to know that they can connect with us and that, that we see examples of people who've done great things, making great contributions Amen. to our communities. And, uh, and so it's good to be able to relate to somebody, isn't it? Amen. And, I mean, and I'm just talking about that this is not going to be the only one. I tell you, you know, it just won't be the only one. Hallelujah. Some of you, your businesses are only in the infancy stage, but it's okay because it's going to grow. It's going to blossom. It's going to become so much more than it has become. Why? Because there's greatness in you. And God is on your side. Amen. 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 So you ride up to Luther Street and you see the whole fleet of buses. Amen. Thank you, God. You know who all those buses are? I mean, you don't want to stand up. You got to show the letter. You never see stand up. You know, somebody don't know you today. God has blessed you. Amen. You don't want to come to give me glory to God. I mean, you remember when you bought that first old bus? <laughs> oh, but look at it now. See what the Lord has done. Amen. We give our praise. We serve as somebody told me a big God. Amen. God, thank you for this great name. Brother William, God bless you. Thank you for your example. Amen. For faithfulness and being an entrepreneur and being an inspiration for so many people. God bless you. Now let me just get a benediction. May the grace of God and the power of the Holy Spirit bless you and invite with us now, henceforth and forevermore. In Jesus' name, the choir, they're going to sing the praise team. And when they get finished, we're just going to leave them out of this place and they're going to rejoice in the Lord. Take the word of God with you. Be blessed and know that God loves you. Amen. Come on, let's get it.